So I have this network here, and um, we see that there's four workstations on either side of this, of this network, and they're connected to um, their own switch on both sides as well, and the switches are connected to a router in the center, or rather an access point. So we will be making a series of simulations to find some important metrics, such as delay, utilization, or throughput. We're not really looking at packet loss, but instead we wish to understand this network's capabilities. Okay, so let's begin quickly here. Uh, for each of these workstations, I will be using one profile. So if we go to our profile definition here, we see that we have five uh, numbers of row. Well, that just means that we have five different profiles. So that's engineer, researcher, e-commerce, sales, multimedia. But really, I'm only gonna use the engineer role. And so if we go to the this specific uh, profile, I see that we can see that I've added, I've added six rows in this one. And so this we have here web browsing, email, a telnet session, peer-to-peer, -peer, file sharing, uh, video conferencing, or and voice over IP. So that's already quite an extensive amount of usage for single profile. And of course, it makes sense because it's for the engineer and the engineer does everything. Now, what I do like to look at is I, li I like to compare all of these applications here. And then at the same time, I'm going to open my application definition. And I will be looking at these one by one. So we have web browsing heavy, right? So let's go down to web browsing. That's right here. And then let's see clearly what we have. So web browsing heavy. So then I've, I've, I'm using the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing uh, option here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that any web browsing is performed, you know, via peer-to-peer. -peer. So, because we, we don't have a central server in this network here. So, if I press OK, there is no server from which um, these workstations can form uh, web browsing. So, it's just going to be done peer-to-peer. -peer. So, it's, just, it's basically just having the name as web browsing. Same with email, right? They're not emailing to a certain... A database but rather they're sending each other emails so i, I call this also peer-to-peer -peer file sharing but when i do look at when, when i go inside the option here i do make them different so emails are sent like every 10 minutes on average really it, it follows a more exponential um probability density function but we can, we can say that on average it's about 10 minutes uh, the inter request time that is let's keep going we have the telnet session and to be honest i don't know what the telnet session is but we have it here so i believe so okay so this might be remote login so that's what that might be okay that makes sense and then we have peer-to-peer -peer file sharing so let's go to the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and it's right here And then this is every um, two hours, so that's that's cool. What else do we have? We have video conferencing, so let's look at video conferencing. And this is video conferencing heavy. And so we have video conferencing option, and then the value is simply high resolution video. Now we have voice over IP right here. And then here we have the value IP telephony and silence suppressed. So that is quite comprehensive in terms of applications for the engineer. All right, so you have six of them. So that works out for us. So we can simply apply these profiles to each of the workstations. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually increase the amount of profiles per workstation in order to increase the utilization so this is how we're going to measure you know find delay as a function of utilization or find throughput as a function of utilization okay so i'm going to go through each and every one of these workstations i'm going to go edit attributes and then i'm going to go down to applications and then supported profiles so right now we only have one number of row so one supported profile and that is the profile of the engineer so i'm going to go ahead and apply all these to all selected 
they're not going to change right here on the bottom right we see a zero so they're not changing because we already uh, organized it that way from the beginning so i'm going to run it here let's press run all right and i'll get back when it's finished so now we're going to go to the results browser we are going to go to utilization here so we're going to look at overlaid we're going to look at average as well okay so what we're looking at here is the utilization from the router to the switch and uh, let's see what else and so from the router to the e-switch and then from the router to the e-switch zero so we're looking at different uh different lines here this one and this one so it's like looking at utilization one way and then the utilization the other way so that's it that's it that's essentially what we're looking at here and that's why there are some slight differences in terms of utilization but they're not really that big because these uh numbers go to 100 because this is a percentage so what we want to do now is we want to actually increase this utilization and the way we do it is by simply adding profiles to each of these workstations now what i could do is i can go into i can go into the specific applications and uh, increase or rather decrease the inter-arrival time that way packets get sent quick uh, more quickly but it is more efficient if i simply add more users to my workstations to increase the utilization because in the end i'm still going to have the same graph but I'm also going to have a number at which I can reference in terms of how many users are accessing or rather using the network at a certain number of utilization. So what I do now is I'm going to go to duplicate scenario. I duplicate it. I'm going to keep it this name, scenario two. Right? So what that means is each workstation is going to have two profiles and the profiles are simply engineers. So we go here applications supported profiles number of rows we're going to have two so now i'm going to add one here profile name it's going to be engineer and then i this is very important i want to apply to selected objects and then i press ok so in the bottom in the bottom left i should see eight objects changed so that's good so now i save it and then i'm going to run it Okay, so I'm already on scenario number three, so that means three engineers per workstation. But in the meantime, I want to show some uh, statistics that are important to make sure that we're keeping track of. So we want to keep track of all of these statistics here. Throughput in bits per second, you know, coming and going. Throughput packets per second and utilization. And then the global statistic we also want to keep track of is the, the Ethernet. Uh, and then we go, we open Ethernet and we want to select delay. So this is the other um, statistic that we want to keep track of. Okay, so it is the next day. Well, you know, not that it took me all day, but rather I took a break and I continued today. But anyways, I've collected all of these samples. And now if we remember each of these numbers next to the scenario that we see here, this basically represents the number of profiles per workstation. So as we go along through each of the scenarios, uh, we have more and more profiles, or in our case, more engineers on each of the workstations. So if we look at this graph specifically, we see that there is more or less an even distribution of sample points ac across the different um, utilizations. So I'll clarify this right away. This is by no means an ideal group of sample points. It's only enough to generate a rough draft of what the delay versus utilization graph might look like. So for instance, if we look here on the um, around the 90 around the 90 percent, we see that we might need a little bit more, but you know this this is all right. So at least enough to generate a rough idea or generate a rough graph, a rough draft of what the delay versus utilization graph would look like okay so speaking of delay let's go to delay here 
So the important part of these graphs is the endpoints. These are the points that we are going to be using in our final graphs. And in order to make use of them, we actually have to do something like this. Here we go show. And then we have to right click here and then export graph data, export graph data to a spreadsheet. So what that will do is it will generate a text document in our directory. Now I'm not going to go through my directory because um, I'm using a terminal here to access OpNet. So I'm just going to show you what the text file would look like. So this is basically what it looks like. And these are all the different traces that we have that we saw in our graph here. See all these different traces? That's basically what this is. But since I said that we're interested in the endpoints, we only want the last row like that. So in addition to that, we also have to look at the individual utilization uh, that data points that we see here. Um, actually, not not utilization, but throughput in the units of bits per second. So the important part is that we're looking at each of them. You know, we want to make sure that we look at node eight and switch node zero, node one, and each of these lines has a a throughput in one direction and a throughput in the other direction as you can see here and so what's going to happen is like let's say if we're looking at the throughput that's um going in this direction in other words to the switch there might be communication in between these workstations here on this side so then it it won't um like if i add up all of the throughput coming out through here it's not going to be equal through the throughput that's going to the router here so this is one thing to keep in mind when we uh, make our graphs. Okay, so just this is a quick little um, block diagram of what um, the throughputs will look like. So in the red here, we have total incoming uh, throughput. I will label, I've labeled that as TI. We have total outgoing throughput, and I've labeled it as TO. And then we have the right here we have the exterior outgoing i just call it eo and then the exterior incoming so i just call that ei and eo all right so we can actually do some quick math here so let's say if we take the difference between the total outgoing and the external outgoing well that's going to give me the internal outgoing now what does this mean well what this means is that we, we will be looking at the incoming traffic that is coming into these workstations, but only with respect to themselves. In other words, it's only the traffic that's coming from other workstations that are connected to, that, that share the same switch, right? So that, that's why I call this internal outgoing, meaning that traffic that's outgoing is meant to go to another workstation that shares the same switch. So therefore, if we take the internal outgoing and then we add the exterior incoming, that should give me the the total incoming value of uh, of throughput. And so this is what I'm going to be checking. I don't need to do this. This is just to make sure that the network is working properly. So it it is something that this this actually takes quite a bit of time, but it's it's an important thing to to make sure that you know we don't have extra data that appears out of the blue or, or extra or data that disappears out of the blue. Okay, so I now have my Excel table with all of the data collected and recorded. So what do we see here? This is all of the measured uh, with respect to the individual workstations and the switch. And then this is also the measured in, uh, with, with respect to the switches, the switch and the router. So basically, if we look at our network here, these set of measurements are from this connection between the switch zero to the router. And then this set of measurements is all of these um, connections to the switch from these workstations on the left. Similarly, I perform the same measurements here, except this is for the other side of the network. So on this side here. 
So now if you look here, I'm taking the sum of the totals. So I'm, I'm adding together each of the incoming graphics or incoming throughput as well as the outgoing throughput. And so I, I put the total outgoing here and then the total incoming here on this table. And so now what we see here is I'm calculating some, um, some values. I'm calculating the internal outgoing, which is what I mentioned uh, um, about earlier. And so then I am performing the check on the total incoming. So let's take a look here. You see here, I'm performing a check on this total incoming. I'm making sure that this value is equal to the value that I find here when I, when I measure it. So these two values should be, you know, more or less the same. And we can see that they are. So this is, once again, this is the calculated and then this is the, the measured. So we can see that they're both the same. And so for completeness sake, I've, I've also included some pictures here in my table about the types of applications that the engineer is performing. And then here I have an example of uh, the workstations that have two engineers per workstation. So, and, and obviously this number can increase in order to increase the utilization. So, we see here that I've, I've also included that number. So we have 10 engineers per workstation, 20, 25, 28. So this is nice. And then finally, we get to make these, uh, these graphs. These are very important graphs because they tell you, they basically give you your delay as a function of utilization. In other words, how much you are utilizing a network will determine how much delay you have in, in the network. So this is a very important measurement for our network. And as time goes on, when it approaches 100, this, this line should shoot up to infinity. Now, I'll, I'll say this again. This is by no means an ideal uh, number of uh, samples or an ideal uh, sample count because we see that there is quite a bit of, um, I would say, percentage between this point and this point here that we don't have any measurements. So it is pretty important to make sure that we take measurements, you know, evenly. And even more so when we get closer and closer to like 100%. Because this is the point that we're interested in. But what I'm showing here is basically the, uh, uh, the, the method that you can get this graph. So this is what's called an ad hoc process because we're manually have to change our utilization in order to get the delay. And in order to change the utilization, we have to do something like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, which is changing the number of engineers per workstation. And so the last graph that we were looking at is the throughput versus utilization. And what we expect to see here is it's basically a linear relationship, but um, because my sample points and my my data isn't isn't like my method of uh, increasing utilization isn't perfect. I see that this is not a straight straight line, but it more or less resembles a straight line. <laughs> so this is just a rough draft of our graphs. Um, in order to get a nice picture, you uh, you do have to spend a lot of time. Um, playing around with the utilization and um, right now I'm kind of lazy I don't want to spend too much time but you know you get the idea of how this is done now <laughs>